Welcome to Medilacto. Today we are going to discuss anti-cancer drug, specifically microtubules inhibitors. In the previous lectures, we have discussed lot of categories of anti-cancer drugs, alkylating agents, anti-metabolites, antibiotics. But now, in this lecture, we will discuss specifically three most important microtubules inhibitors: vincristin, vinblastin, vinorelbin. So, if you see here, vincristin also can be written as the VX, okay. Vinblastin can be written with the VBL, okay. And vinorelbin can be written with the V R B. So actually, these three drugs derive from the plant that is called periwinkle, or you can say vinca rosea. So that's the most important thing. Plant name is periwinkle, or you can say vinca rosea. So that's why these drugs actually called vinca alkaloid. So that they are actually called vinca alkaloids drugs. Vincristin, vinblastin, vinorelbin. So actually these drugs are cell cycle specific drugs. They will act at the specific phase of the cell cycle so that's very much important thing which you have to remember cell cycle is specific drugs so that's the most important thing so basically you will see the four important phases first one is the g phase second is the s phase in which you will see the synthesis of the dna in the previous lecture the important drugs that actually act in the s phase okay and after that you will see the g2 phase and after that you will see the mitotic phase in which you will see the actual division of the cell so we actually further categorize the mitotic phase into four phases first is the prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase so these are basically the different phases of the mitotic phase. So the basic, actually these drugs specifically will act in the metaphase of the cell cycle. Okay. In which the chromosome actually form the metaphase plate. And after that in the anaphase you will see the separations of the chromosome. Okay. Before we discuss the mechanism of the these vinca alkaloids we will first see that how microtubules form so what is actually the microtubule so in the cell if you see here is this is the cell and uh, you will see lot of cytoskeleton present in the cell so that is the cytoskeleton cytoskeleton skeleton of the cell and that skeleton is actually composed of microtubule. Okay, that's the most important. Microtubule. And there are actually fibers like structures. And microtubules actually form or composed of the protein that is tubulin. So that's the most important thing. Tubulin protein. Okay. First of all, we will see that how these microtubules or the cytoskeleton forms so if you see here you will see microtubules actually present in the dimer form and it is composed of alpha unit and the beta unit that is actually called the heterodimer okay so actually you will see the several dimers actually present in the cell they will combine and or you can say they will polymerize poly Merization that is actually called polymerization in which you will see these tibulin heterodimer form the proper polymerization. Okay, it will form a single strand or fiber that is actually composed of proteins that is tibulin. So that is actually called the polymerization in which the different dimers polymerize to form a single structure or single fiber that is actually called polymerization. Okay, when this structure break down or decompose into the different uh, di heterodimer, then it is called depolymerization. 
breakdown of the hetero diamond so that's the most important thing that how microtubules form they are actually spindles okay that's the most important thing okay so if you see here specifically metaphase metaphase of the cell cycle in which you will see the chromosome actually arrange at the center of the cell okay and at the side or at the pole you will see the centrioles centrioles that, that are actually the organelles cell organelles and they are actually present in the pair and forms the 90 degree between each other so one pair is actually present at one pole of the cell and one pair is actually present at the other pole okay they will form the microtubule spindle okay that's the most important thing they starts producing the microtubule from both sides okay lot of microtubules form they are actually composed of tubuli okay so in that situation some microtubules attach to the chromosome at the both sides okay that's the most important thing and some will come across each other here are basically there are some uh, microtubules that attach between each other or come across each other so that's why the fibers or microtubules that combine each other they are called interpole microtubule microtubule and the tubule microtubule that actually attach to the chromosome they are actually called the kinetochore kinetochore microtubule after that you will see the second phase is the anaphase in which you will see the chromosome separate one chromatin move one side of the cell and other goes towards the other side and ultimately you will see the cell divide okay that's the normal process but then how vinca alkaloid act its function so actually when we take the vinca alkaloid then the vinca alkaloid prevent the formations of the fibers microtubules how vinca alkaloids actually if i say here is the vinca alkaloid vinca alkaloid molecule attached to the heterodimer different heterodimers and they form the para crystallization para crystalline structure they form the crystal and prevent the formations of the microtubules when there is no microtubules there is no microtubules actually form in the mitotic spindle so that's the most important thing there is no actually form the microtubules in the metaphase and now there is no separations of the or no segregations of the chromatin sub single arm of the chromosome and ultimately in that situation the cell prefer or goes towards the apoptosis or you can say cell death so that's the most important thing and i will repeat that vinca alkaloid prevent the formations of the microtubules when there is no microtubules there is no formations of spindle fiber and ultimately there is no separations of the chromosome and ultimately cell will not divide and it will goes towards the death so that's why we have got our point that we just want to destroy the cancer cell so ultimately cell will not divide cancer cell will not divide and ultimately we can cure the cancer so that's why microtubule inhibitor act as anti cancer drugs okay if we discuss the pharmacokinetics okay these drugs actually given through the iv line so that's the most important thing they are given through iv line and second is the vinca alkaloids actually metabolized in the liver so if you see here is the liver they are actually metabolized in the liver through the cytochrome for cytochrome for 50 and ultimately they will release in the bile so actually we know that it will release in the bile and ultimately it goes towards the feces so that's the most important thing so 
those patients who are actually face the liver impairment or biliary obstruction, they should not be given the vincalicoloid because they create the problem. Because cytochrome P450 actually metabolizes the vincalicoloid. When the liver is impaired, then there is no metabolization of the vincalicoloid that creates the toxicity of the vincalicoloid in our body. Okay. And the important thing, two most important things, vinca alkaloids create the vesicant. They are vesicant, okay, form the blisters on the skin or you can say reddishness of the skin. And second is, they should not be taken through the intrathecal, intrathecal route. That is most important route. Actually, intrathecal route that the drugs actually insert into the subarachnoid space. That is actually present in the brain, brain and the spinal cord. So, in the brain and the spinal cord, you will see the meninges. So, second is the arachnoid. So, beneath the arachnoid space, arachnoid space, you will see the most important. So, actually, drugs given in the subarachnoid space that is called intrathecal roots. So, if you give the vinca alkaloid, then it can go towards the death. Or you can face the death of the patient. So that's the most important precaution regarding giving the vincalcloid. Okay, if we discuss the clinical uses. So first is the vincristine, VX. It is actually used in the acute lymphoblastic leukemia. This is the most important thing. Second thing which you see, Hodgkin lymphoma and the non-Hodgkin lymphoma. In Hodgkin lymphoma, you will see the redistant Burke cell. That is the most important golden point of the Hodgkin lymphoma. And uh, second is the non-Hodgkin lymphoma. You can also uh, give the vincristine in the Wilms tumor. That is actually in the case of children. That actually form in the children. That is actually called the nephroblastoma. Nephroblastoma that's formed in the kidney. So, nephro actually word that is related to the kidney. So, nephroblastoma and it can also be given in the Ewing soft tissue sarcoma. Ewing's soft tissue sarcoma. So, actually, or you can say that actually sarcoma that actually form in the soft tissues uh, and the bone as well. And the vinblastine is actually given along with the two most important anti-cancer drugs. So, you can give the combined therapy with the bleomycin and the cisplatin. So, these are, they, they actually use in combined therapy. Vinblastine, bleomycin, that is actually the anti-tumor antibiotics and this is platin. So, they are actually given for the metastatic testicular carcinoma. Metastatic testicular carcinoma, that's the most important testicular that has metastasized to the other parts of the body as well. And they can also use in the uh, Hodgkin lymphoma and the non-Hodgkin lymphoma. So, this is actually the use of Vinblastin. And second is the Vinoralbin. Vinoralbin is actually used again combined therapy with the combined therapy with the plastin and that is actually used in the non small cell lung cancer. So that's the most important use of Vinoralbin. Okay. If we discuss the adverse effects of the, these vinca alkaloid, so first is the vincristin that is actually also called the oncovin. Onco vin. That is another name of the vincristine. So, vincristine, you will see the there are a lot of similarities of the adverse effect of vincristine and the vinblastine. So, if we see the combined adverse effects of both of them will be cellulitis or you can say phlebitis. So, that's the most important adverse effects of both of them. And you can also see the alopecia and the general adverse effect like nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. Nausea, vomiting and the diarrhea. These are basically the general effects. Okay. So, and you can also see the neurotoxicity in both of them. 
or you can say peripheral neuropathy like you can say the paresthesia, ataxia. So these are basically the peripheral neuropathy as well. Okay, if we discuss the specific adverse effect, so if we see the ad uh, uh, wind crystal, you will see the constipation, actually the specific adverse effect of the wind crystal. And a specific adverse effect of the wind blasting is the myelosuppression. Is the specific adverse effects of the wind blasting. And last is the venoralbin. So that is again very much important. It actually uh, creates the granulocytopenia in which white blood cell having granules like uh, neutrophil, eosinophil and basophil. These are basically the most important granulocytes. So that's create the granulocytopenia in which the granulocytes become low and granulocytes you will see the three categories neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil. So this is all about the microtubule inhabitant. If you still have any question you may ask in the comment section. Thank you so much.